So you guys recently asked the question of what plants can you overwinter indoors? And that was after I did a video on overwintering peppers indoors. And yeah, duh, I left out a ton of plants. There are so many plants, including decorative plants, all the way to fruits and vegetables you can overwinter inside. So I'm gonna show you which ones those are and how to go about the overwintering process for nearly any plant in your garden. So let's get into it. So this rule can actually apply to a number of different plants, but some plants are going to respond better to this than others. And the portions of the plants that you take in this process will actually determine their survivability or their ability to succeed just in general. So I'm gonna show you three different ways to actually capture a plant in an overwintering process and hopefully get them to the next spring. The choice you choose will completely depend on your space, your lighting, and along with your tolerance for pests in your home. So number one is coleus. Uh, coleus is a plant that has a veget vegetative stem that is not woody in nature. It's not semi-hard and it's not hardwood. It is just a flesh type stem, similar to what we see on a tomato, for example. Now, if we were to look at something like a squash, a pumpkin or a spaghetti squash, we'd note a difference between the two. One has a hollow stem and one is a fleshy stem all the way through. What we're looking for capturing a plant that can overwinter is a solid stem. There's no hollow tunnel in the middle, like what we see with squash. So, if we know that coleus has a solid stem all the way through, we now understand that we can save from it. Other plants that would fall into this category would be herbs, for example, sage, basil, things of that nature, and or ivy, hanging and trailing plants. Now you're probably thinking, well, lobelia or alyssum, all these things also have stems that are fleshy, smaller, yes, but fleshy, and should be able to be taken from cuttings. Now the key here, and this is where some plants do well and others don't, actually comes down to whether or not that plant is flowering. So if we look at the coleus, we can see one flower bunch here, but these lower portions are just stems, no flowers forming. And even the tiniest flower formation, so this guy here has just the tiniest little flower coming out, that is enough to cause the process of overwintering or getting a cutting from this plant to become difficult. Removing cuttings from a plant, whether it be something like a hanging ivy or a tomato or a coleus, we wanna aim for the branches that are not yet flowering. And that is why things like alyssum or lobelia flowering plants tend to not transfer well into the indoor environment via cuttings. Other things like basil, for example, again, don't do well as cuttings when they're already beginning to flower. And when we're at this late in the season, it can be difficult to find those plants that don't have the flower stem. But once you do, all you're gonna do is pinch it off. Now, you can get several cuttings from this one plant, but for the greatest vigor or the greatest likelihood of a plant surviving, you actually just wanna take this top portion of that stem that does not have the flower and you're going to remove these two side leaves, these two side leaves that I just removed and then this bottom portion right here, leaving just this in its place. This is perfect for a cutting setup. Now what I like to do is take some tin foil and put it on a cup poke a little hole in the tinfoil, and this guy can sit in there. And he can last for quite a while, but once he gets some roots, you may want to pot him, pot him up and put him under a grow light or in a very sunny south-facing window. They're gonna need a lot of light to make sure they don't end up leggy. So you can go through the whole plant and take as many cuttings as you see fit. Again, just removing these two side leaves, and then this bottom inner node here, you're gonna remove it right at the bottom of that node and you're good to go. Some people do enjoy allowing them to scab up on the bottoms, which is totally fine. You can let them kind of just dry out for a few hours. Or in some cases, people like to put the growth hormone on the end. Again, that works as well, but that's what a cutting looks like. So that is one way to preserve the the plant in and of itself. It's a clone of itself. Now, if you want to keep the entire plant in its entirety, 
then this is what you need to do. So here's a begonia, a big begonia, and she is really pretty. Now you could do a cutting from the begonia, and in the begonia's case, even just a bit of a leaf would translate into a plant, or you can do the entire stem. Say you want this big guy to come inside because it is so beautiful, that is totally doable. Other ones you may want to choose to bring indoors entirely would be things like succulents you bought for an arrangement for the summer, or geraniums are another great example of a plant that actually is more similar to a vine as it gets a little bit older. Begonias are another one that people tend to like to bring the entire plant indoors. Uh, Gerber daisies, for example. And in that case, what you're gonna do is you're actually going to simply remove the plant. Similar to the pepper video, you wanna take as much of the root as possible, pot it up in new potting soil because this potting soil has a very high likelihood of gnats and thrips and flea beetles, you name it, actually being laid eggs in it and made a mess of that soil. So you wanna go with some fresh soil and then predatory mites and or predatory nematodes to help combat any potential pest issues that may arise and actually putting this plant into a quarantine section of your home to make sure that it does not infect any house plants or indoor gardening activities you have going on. And in the event that leaves are looking a little bit sick, a little weak, feel free to trim it up as much as possible, but I can get behind the reason why you'd want to keep as much of that plant's integrity as possible because it is really, truly beautiful. So that is one way to bring these guys inside. Begonias, geraniums, Gerber daisies, succulents, uh, Parlor palms are all plants marketed as summertime outdoor plants that you may want to bring indoors to overwinter in its entirety, not as a cutting. Now, some plants I can get behind as being way too pretty to not overwinter or get inside, but you know that overwintering them is near to impossible or not realistic because it is just an annual plant and therefore it's going to run its life cycle which is relatively short to begin with and then you'll never see that plant again and that's why you may want to consider some seed saving now you can do this with vegetables really easily but you can also do it with flowers so whether it's a cosmo or a marigold or those alyssums or those lobelias <laughs> you name it you want to save those flowers now the process is not that difficult. All you're gonna do is stop deadheading and let the dead flowers hang out on that plant and let them dry out. From there, you're going to pluck the flowers off and then just throw them into a paper envelope. Save them for next year and start them indoors. Now, one hack for this or one trick that I like to incorporate is not, uh, labeling obviously helps, but to not remove the flower petals. So once this guy desiccates or dries up, you're actually gonna want to leave the flower whole whenever possible. And this is great for things like lobelias or alyssum, really tiny seeds in particular. Uh, chamomile is another one, really tiny seed, and then actually planting or breaking up that flower at the time of planting indoors. This is going to give you a really great indication as to the color of the original plant or the original flower without you guessing. And it also makes it really easy to capture the seeds and to store them long term because of how small and delicate some of these flower seeds may be. So seed saving is definitely number one on my list. It means no pests, it means no transplanting here in the fall winter season and it works wonder. So definitely give seed saving a shot uh, in particular for flowers. If you want more information on how to seed save more exotic things that have gelatinous coatings or uh, come from inside of a fruit, then go check out my video on that. I did do one here just recently. But anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.